this video, I'm gonna give you a glimpse into some of the self-care habits that I'm prioritizing this month as a busy solo mom and entrepreneur to help me prioritize my well-being. Hey guys, welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Noelle and I help women create sustainable, healthy lifestyles even when life is going off the rails through my online fitness and wellness studio, NRS. So if any of this sounds useful, I'd love for you to subscribe and stick around. So the first habit that I'm really focusing on this month is journaling. I have always really struggled with journaling. Uh, I would open up a page and just the blankness of it and the infinite possibilities of things that I could write down felt overwhelming. And so I would stop myself before I even got started or it would take me so long that I hated how much time I wasted or spent journaling and didn't really feel like it was helping me or moving me forward in any way. Now I know people have raved about journaling and they love the benefits of it, especially for their mental health, but for me, I had just never seen or experienced that part of journaling. But I came across this book called The Artist's Way, and I'll link that for you below if you're interested. And the first thing that she talks about prioritizing in her introduction before you even get into the first chapter is journaling. And I immediately rolled my eyes and thought, oh, here we go again, you know, another person talking about journaling. But the way that she approached journaling was so refreshing for me that it felt like it was something I could actually do. And if you read the book, you'll get all the actual details, but she just calls it morning pages. And she talks about it being a complete stream of consciousness, brain dump. Like you could really write anything and everything you want. You could even jot down why you don't wanna be writing or journaling or that you have nothing to say over and over and over again. But she simply says, fill three pages every morning. There are no rules other than that. And there was something about this style of journaling that just felt so freeing to me. I could sit down, I could write about nothing. It didn't matter or have to have deep meaning. It wasn't something that I was gonna be handing on to my grandchildren. Literally a place for me to just dump the chaos that's happening in my mind from the day before or in the morning when I'm up and things are kind of rumbling under the surface. And it's been allowing me to start my day feeling so much more clear headed and focused. And even though I approach this with a lot of resistance, I'm really surprised by how much I've actually gotten out of this in the last two and a half weeks that I've really been prioritizing it. The amount of clarity and even being able to make big shifts in my mindset just because of having the space to say everything you need to say and get it all off your chest before the day actually starts rolling has been so beneficial to my mental health. So it's something that I'm surprised how consistent I've actually been with not missing a day. And there are times where I'm like three pages, is a, it's a commitment. You actually have to sit there, you get a hand cramp and it's a commitment to sit there and write for three pages. But it has been so helpful and so incredibly beneficial for my own sanity and mental health that it's something I really plan on sticking with. And I think everyone could benefit from this technique. Okay, the second one is juicing and healthy mocktails. Now, I have gone back and forth with juicing throughout my life, but right now, as we're coming into summer and wanting to have like refreshing drinks, I have wanted to find a way to really implement a little bit of added health benefits for myself and as a mom for my son. I love knowing what is going into his drinks and that it actually has some benefits and it's giving him some antioxidants and some extra vegetables that he might not be getting on a regular basis. So for me, since I'm busy, I don't have time to juice every morning. I make a big batch of like an immunity boosting juice or ginger turmeric shots throughout the week that we can sip on or even a big jug of green glow juice and my son will drink this up and I love that he's taking in really healthy, fresh ingredients and it's really refreshing even for me. But what I really enjoy is making my own little mocktails and these have been really fun for me as a space to just enjoy the wind down at the end of the day. For me, I can use this as a little reward at the end of the day to sit back, relax, and actually help my body and my mind shift into a more restful time of the day. And sometimes this has helped me get outside and just relax in the evening, sipping on a nice refreshing drink, or I might light a candle, grab a book, and sip on my drink while I'm reading. But regardless, it's really helping me make more of a shift at the end of the day to come into a place of more stillness and quiet and really preparing my mind and my body for rest. 
And the third one is an end of day ritual. And as an entrepreneur, I have gotten really, really good at working in nooks and crannies of my day. And especially in the evenings after my son would go to bed, that was prime time to crack open the laptop and get some content going. But recently I've really been noticing that this is just not working for me anymore. And it's really having a negative impact on my sleep at night, taking longer to fall asleep, waking up in the middle of the night, all because I'm on a screen. And then I'm also stimulating my mind in ways that doesn't really help it wind down for sleep. So I knew I needed to shift the evenings to be able to prioritize that wind down time, but just telling myself you're not going to work after your son goes to bed or, or, you know, don't think about the list didn't really help because as we all know, especially as women, the list continues on and on in our minds and we feel a little bit restless or agitated. At least I did. So I found that creating a little ritual at the end of the day actually helps me shift and helps me shift my mindset too, as to what the expectation is for the evening. And I found that this was really powerful to make a little ritual, a little rhythm in my routine every day that helps to break up or delineate the line between work hours and resting hours. And so maybe that looks like making a fun little mocktail and just taking a few moments to just relax and enjoy while I'm making this or lighting a candle or preparing the living room for a nice relaxing evening, whatever it is, it's just a little moment where I'm acknowledging we're stepping into a restful period and giving myself permission to actually turn off the noise of all the busyness of the day to be satisfied with the work that I have actually put in and to come into a place to rest. Now the next one is prioritizing sleep. So I have experimented with waking up really early, having the 5 a.m. morning routines and getting a bunch of stuff done before my son even wakes up. And I think there are seasons for that. But for me in this season, I really felt like I needed to prioritize my sleep. And for me, that meant not only prioritizing when I go to bed, which is between 9 and 10 p.m. most nights, not perfect, but it does happen pretty regularly, and then prioritizing when I wake up, being really intentional about that time. And if my body needed more sleep to give myself permission to have that rest. So this month I've been prioritizing that rest and sleeping until six or even six 30 and not feeling guilty about it, but feeling really good. Like I'm actually giving my body the support it needs and I'm waking up in a better mood. I've got more energy in the afternoons when I used to hit like a major slump. And overall, I just feel better getting more rest right now. The next one is walking. Now, in addition to my regular Pilates and strength training workouts, I have added in just moving my body more regularly throughout the day. For me, I really wanted to get out of this idea that we've kind of created in the fitness world that fitness happens in a time block. You have 30 minutes or an hour to get your workout in, check it off the list. You did your workout for the day and now you're done. And really, the idea of movement and moving throughout our day and moving more throughout our day is what should be prioritized overall. So for me, I really wanted to just prioritize more movement, getting a little bit more steps and more activity all throughout my day. Now, sometimes this is a longer 30 minute to an hour long walk that I'll do where I'm walking three or four miles um, and getting uh, you know more steps in, but most often it's two quick walks throughout the day. So one in the morning and one in the evening after dinner. And I have really noticed a huge shift in my mood, but also just the mental space. I have noticed that when I need to unplug or I'm feeling those pent up emotions of tension that need a place to just be expelled, that taking that walk break in the morning is so beneficial. Or even in the evening, it's a great time to be able to connect with my little guy. And I love the ability to just fully unplug. I used to always listen to something, a podcast or music or something. And lately I've been really loving this idea of just unplugging and creating space for our minds to just wander. So for me, it's been really beneficial to just go fully unplugged, allow my mind to just daydream and wander and notice the things that are actually happening around me and practice a little bit more presence as I'm walking. And I love the added health benefits of walking from lowering my blood sugar to even getting a little mini EMDR session by the way that your eyes dart side to side while you're walking. Um, it's fantastic for mental health. It's fantastic for connection and really fostering good communication with my son. So it's something that I have really prioritized this month and I think it's gonna stay. And the last one is resetting my bed. Now this has become a weekly habit where I am just stripping the bed, 
washing everything, deep cleaning, even the duvet or the throw covers, everything on the bed, refluffing the feather mattress, and maybe even spraying it with essential oils. Basically trying to give myself a five-star hotel experience because I wanna gift my future self the experience of diving into a cozy, fluffy, fresh bed at the end of a long day. I was noticing that in the evenings, I was kind of avoiding bedtime a little bit or procrastinating or getting stuck on the couch scrolling or watching the next episode and realizing that I was kind of procrastinating going to bed because I just didn't want that quiet alone time to end. And if you're a mom, you get the end of the night solitude and just being able to enjoy and soak up those few moments that you have to yourself. But now I've been looking forward to the end of the night and just climbing into that bed and relaxing and unwinding and just enjoying my space a little bit more because of this. I'm also really adamant about making my bed every morning because there's something about walking down the hallway and catching that fluffy made bed out of the corner of my eye that just gives me a sense of accomplishment and peace like nothing else really does. There was a time not too long ago, I was in early grief and the bed never got made. I rolled out of bed and into bed and in and out of time that just didn't really seem to have any start or ending. And I was very much in survival mode, which is totally normal if you've ever experienced deep traumatic loss. But slowly I began making my bed and it became this little ritual or this little thing that I could control even if the world around me was spiraling out of control. And it became this little subtle mental signal to myself that we were gonna make it, we were gonna be okay. And it sounds silly to say it, but we made our bed so we can do other things today too. And now, even if I feel less than productive or I didn't quite tackle everything on the to-do list for the day, I still finish the day feeling accomplished because that little task of making the bed was done. Now, if you're in a similar season where you're really struggling even to get your bed made, um, I put together a whole video about stress and stress cycles and some simple, really, really simple tools that you can do when you're in a really hard season to help you stabilize and calm the swirls so that you feel more grounded and calm. And I'll go ahead and link that video for you below if you're interested in getting that guide. And if you've made it all the way to the end of this video, first of all, thank you. I really appreciate the support. And secondly, would you go ahead and drop a blue heart emoji down below into the comments so that I can drop in there and say hello to you personally. And if you found this video helpful and you want more useful tools like this, I would love to invite you to come and check out everything I've got going for you inside my studio NRS. Over there, I've got daily workouts, curated programs, tools, and tips that are gonna help support you to create a healthy, sustainable routine for yourself, even if life is going a little crazy or you find yourself in a hard season. And I'll be there working alongside you through it all as somebody who gets it and knows what it's like to have to prioritize your well being and really fight for that even when things are really hard. But I hope you have a beautiful day. I hope this video was helpful and maybe even gave you some ideas of how to prioritize your own self care this month. And I'd love to hear from you. What are you doing? What are the things that you are finding that are really helping you this month to prioritize that self care? Let me know in the comments and I will see you back here for another one really soon.